Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning dear students, welcome to the class. This is lecture number 15. In the previous lectures, we discussed the policies followed by Warren Hastings and Corn Valleys and again the policies followed by the imperialist Wellesley and now we are going to discuss the policies followed by Governor General Lord Hastings from 1813 to 1823. It was during the period of Lord Wellesley, he tried to establish British supremacy in India by subduing the Mysorean rulers in South India and defeating the Marathas with whom Lord Wellesley engaged the subsidiary alliance. He also brought subsidiary alliance in the region of Auth. But Lord, Lord Warren, Warren Hastings policy was to declare India in India the British as a paramount power. It was during the period of Lord Wellesley the French was also subdued. With his intention in establishing British paramountcy in India, Lord Hastings adopted many policies. By adopting the aggressive policies, Lord Hastings was able to establish British paramountcy in India. His period was from 1813 to 1823 as the Governor General of Bengal. Now we are going to see the major policies adopted by Hastings and the dominions brought under the British control and the administrative reforms adopted by Lord Hastings during his tenure as the Governor General of Bengal. His first attention was turned towards Nepal. It was the first problem Lord Hastings had faced. You now recall that in 1801, Lord Wellesley got half of the dominions of the Nawab of Auth in 1801 from the Nawab of Auth. By imposing the subsidiary alliance, the British got half of the dominions of the Nawab of Auth. It was also included one of the frontier areas of Gorakhpur, which shared borders with Nepal. Now, the Gorakhpur which shared its boundaries with Nepal. The Gurkhas of Nepal, they were not in a position to extend to the northern part of their country because in northern part they were checked by the Chinese. So they turned their attention towards the territories possessed by English East India Company. These territories, the English East India Company received from the Nawab of Auth in 1801 during the period of Lord Wellesley as the Governor General of Bengal. The Gurkhas occupied Batwal in north of Basti district and Shioraj. These places were occupied by the Gurkhas of Nepal. 
under the treaty between Navajo Aut and the English. These were the territories belonged to English East India Company. And without wasting much resources, the English was able to capture back these places of Watwan and Shioraj from the Gurkhas of Nepal. But the conflict between the Gurkhas of Nepal and the English East India Company did not last there. In 1814, again the Gurkhas of Nepal occupied three police stations of Badwal. It was because of the occupation of these four, three police stations, Lord Hastings decided to start military operations against the Gurkhas of Nepal. But in the battle between the Gurkhas of Nepal and the British, the British failed. It was a serious setback to the British. However, after the reinforcement of the forces of the English, they renewed their attack with the Gurkhas of the Nepal. And in the second attempt, the British forces were able to capture Almora and Humayun hills from the Gurkhas of Nepal. In the same year, the English was also captured the fort of Malone from the Gurkhas of Nepal. Now, with the following of defeat by defeat, the Gurkhas now decided to negotiate peace with the British. However, the Gurkhas of Nepal came forward to enter into a peace treaty with the British. The British put forward exorbitant demands. The demands put forward by the British was not acceptable to the Gurkhas of Nepal. So, hostilities broke out again between the Gurkhas of Nepal and the English forces. But in this round of struggle, the British was able to completely defeat the Gurkhas at Makwanpur in 1816. The Gurkhas were completely defeated in this war in 1816. Now, the time was ripe for entering treaty between the Gurkhas of Nepal and the British. In 1816, the Treaty of Sagauli this treaty was signed between the British and the Gurkhas of Nepal. What were the terms of the treaty? The Gurkhas of Nepal surrendered the district of Garhwal and Humayun, including a greater portion of Tarai, which later helped the British to establish hill stations in these Tarai. Garhwal and Humayun, these places were surrendered by the Gurkhas to the British. And the Gurkhas of Nepal also accepted a British resident, he will be stationed at he would be stationed at Kathmandu. The resident would be stationed at Kathmandu, the capital of the Nepal. And the Gurkhas of Nepal also joined the services of the English East India Company as mercenaries. They were one of the finest soldiers of the English East India Company. And after the Anglo-Nepal War, now we are going to see 
the policy is followed by lot of hastings towards the indian states and he turned his attention to the suppression of the pindaris and his next attention was it to destroy the independent power of the marathas you recall that the marathas who were defeated during the second anglo maratha war during the period of lord wellesley and in these marathas chiefs subsidiary alliance treaty was ended and subsidiary forces of the english were stationed in the capitals of the marathas and to accept the marathas the supremacy of the english east india company and to bring under the other indian states under the control of the english east india company these were the policies adopted by lord hastings he had to follow these policies one was it to the suppression of the pindaris in western and central india then he was it to subdue the marathas lord warren hastings and during the period of lord wellesley treaties were engaged between the marathas and the english forces but they were not completely defeated and surrendered to the english east india company so his next attention was to bring the marathas under the control of the english east india company and to bring other states under the control of the english east india company these were the measures adopted by lord hastings first of all let us start with the suppression of the pindaris the pindaris were marauders whose main occupation was looting and the plunder they were first here in 1689 during the invasion of aurangasib into the territory of the marathas they belong to both the religions of hinduism and islam it was during the period of peshwa bajirao he was the second peshwa of the marathas they served as the regular horsemen in the maratha army they served the army for any salary but only after getting license for plundering these pindaris used to serve the army of the peshwa bajirao but after the third battle of panipat in 1761 in this battle battle of panipat agamad shah abdali defeated the maratha forces led by sadashiva rao and after this failure of the marathas in the third battle of panipat the pindari settled in malwa and they also served as the auxiliary of the maratha chiefs like sindhia golkar and the nizam of hyderabad they served as the auxiliaries of the forces of these maratha chiefs and the nizam of hyderabad in 1794 one of the maratha chiefs sindhia granted them land for their settlement at narbada valley but once they established their settlement in darbada valley they extended to the neighboring dominions through aggressive policies but it was during the period of lord wellesley from 1798 to 1805 the number of pindari cells 
during the period of Wellesley? What was the main reason behind the selling of the number of Pindaris during the period of Lord Wellesley? Because it was the because of the imposition of subsidiary alliance, most of the subsidiary state disbanded their army. And the protection of the subsidiary state was taken over by the forces of the English East India Company on payment made by the subsidiary state. So, most of the subsidiary state used to disband their army, including the Nizam of Hyderabad. So, these Pindaris rendered jobless. Following which, in the beginning of the 19th century, they began to raid the territories of the English East India Company, who were the leaders of these Pindaris. They were Chittu, Masil Muhammad, and Karim Khan. They were the leaders who provided leadership to these Pindaris to plunder and loot. In 1812, they plundered the British territories of Mursapur and Shahabad. It was followed by the raid in the territories of Nizam of Hyderabad in 1815. Again, in 1816, they plundered the Northern Sarkars. Northern Sarkars were now under the control of the British. From the Second Carnatic War, Northern Sarkars had been under the control of the British. Now, with the raiding of the Pindaris, on the territories possessed by the English East India Company, Lord Hastings decided to take serious decisions leading to the suppression of the Spindaris. Lord Hastings also got the authorization to start military operations and suppression of the Pindaris. By the end of 1817, Lord Hastings was able to suppress the Pindaris once for all. What happened to their rulers? Karim Khan, he was one of the leader of leaders of the Pindaris. Karim Khan used to surrender before the British. But he was given a small estate by the British in Gorakhpur district and Karim Khan settled there. There another leader was Fasil Muhammad. He took shelter in the camp of Sindhya. But Sindhya handed over him to the British and in captivity he committed suicide. Chittu was another leader. He escaped to the forest where he was killed by a tiger. Thus, all the leaders of the Pindaris came to an end. Now, we are going to deal with the Hastings policy towards the Marathas. Now, you may recall that earlier with the Marathas, the English fought two rounds of struggle. In the first round of struggle was from 1775 to first round of struggle was 1775 to 1782. And after 20 years, Another round of struggle was broke out between the Marathas and the English forces.
and in 1806 the english were able to defeat the peshwa as well as the other maratha chiefs yasodrau kolka bonsile kekwar all of them were submitted before the british during the second round of struggle between the marathas and the english and even before a treaty of basain was signed between peshwa and the british accepting a subsidiary alliance from lord wellesley however they accepted subsidiary alliance they were not uh, submitted or their territories were not completely merged with the british after surrendering their territories to the care of the british they were ruling as before their territories were not completely merged with the british now the attention of lord hastings was the complete surrender and the amalgamation of the territories of the maratha city english east india company and the declaration of the paramountcy after suppressing the independent powers enjoyed by maratha chiefs of sindhya bonsle and golkar he wanted to suppress these independent powers of these maratha chiefs and he wanted to integrate their territories with the british empire in india and to proclaim the british a paramount power so a treaty of nagpur was signed between lord hastings and appa sahib he was the ruler of bonsle at nagpur in 1816 this was the treaty of nagpur what were the terms of the treaty signed between appa sahib the ruler of bonsle at nagpur and lord hastings a subsidiary force of six battalions a regiment of cavalry and the company of european artillery men would be stationed at nagpur it was one of the terms of the treaty of nagpur signed between bonsle and lord hastings appa sagi was also required to pay 7.5 lakh rupees per annum for the maintenance of the british troops at nagpur he was also required to surrender the foreign affairs to the care of the english east india company now the bonsle lost his independent foreign relations now he could engage with the, the third power or the third party only through the british no doubt the treaty of nagpur was a great advantage from the british side it gave the british the control over the strategically located nagpur now going to see how the internal strife with among the marathas provided an opportunity to the british to effectively intervene and subdue the maratha forces to the british peshwa climate on the territories of kekwar of baroda it was another opportunity provided to the british to intervene effectively in the maratha affairs peshwa entered into conflict with kekwar of baroda on territorial disputes peshwa claimed certain territories possessed by kekwar as peshwas gangadhar shastri he was one of the envoys sent by kekwar to pune to negotiate 
these ter territorial disputes with the Peshwa at Pune. It was because of the intervention of the English, Kekwar sent Gangadhar Shastri to Pune to make a settlement with the Peshwa. But Gangadhar Shastri was murdered at Nasik in 1815. This Gangadhar Shastri was sent to Pune to negotiate with the territorial dispute between Peshwa and Gekwar at the intervention or at the instance of the British. The resident Trimbakji, he was the chief minister of Peshwa. He was the British resident located at Pune. He expressed that Trim, it was Trimbagaji, he was the chief minister of Peshwa at Pune, killed Gangadhar Shastri. So, the resident demanded the surrender of Trimbagaji, but it was opposed by Peshwa. It strained the relationship between Peshwa and the English resident Elphiston. It provided an opportunity to enter into another round of struggle between the Maratha forces and the British. Even though Elphiston, the British resident at Pune, repeatedly asked Peshwa to surrender Trimbagaji, the chief minister of Peshwa at Pune, Peshwa continued to decline it. So, the English forces under Colonel Smith attacked and occupied Pune, following which another treaty of Pune was signed between Lord Hastings and the Peshwa in 1817. It was the treaty signed after the Treaty of Basain. Under the Treaty of Basain, subsidiary alliance was accepted by Peshwa and the resident began to be stationed at Peshwa's capital Pune. In the Treaty of Basain of 1802, a Peshwa accepted the subsidiary alliance and this was the another treaty, the Treaty of Pune signed between Peshwa and the British. It was signed in 1817. What were the Treaty of Pune? What were the terms of the Treaty of Pune? Under the terms of the Treaty of Pune, Peshwa accepted the dissolution of the Maratha Confederacy. Maratha Confederacy was now disbanded. Earlier, there were four Maratha chiefs. They were controlled by the Peshwa at Pune. Now, the foreign affairs of the Peshwa was also surrendered to the British resident. All communications between Peshwa and a third power should be made only through the British resident. He was stationed at Pune. The Peshwa also renounced his claim on the territories possessed by Gekwar. It resulted the conflict between the Peshwa and the Gekwar. Gekwar was it to required to pay 5 lakh, 5 lakh rupees annually to Peshwa for his surrender of his claims over the territories possessed by Gekwar. In addition to that, under the terms of the Treaty of Pune, signed between the British and the Peshwa, he was required to surrender Fort of Agamadunagar, Bundelkand, Malwa and Hindustan to the company. 
with this majority territories of the peshwa became the part of the english east india company another treaty was forced by lord hastings in 1870 on one of the maratha chiefs sindhia what were the terms of treaty signed between sindhia and the british under which the ruler of sindhia maharaja of sindhia was required to provide 5000 troops of cavalry to fight against the pindaris and the maharaja of sindhia was required not to increase the strength of their army british garrisons were also stationed at the sindhia's forts so peshwa now got reduced to submission and his territories were became the part of the english now sindhia was also required not to strengthen his strengthen his army now the peshwa and the maratha chiefs decided to fight back the british it started with the set on fire the residency at pune with the setting on fire the british residency at pune the third anglo maratha war commenced but in this third round of struggle also the marathas were not able to defeat the english forces even though they joined together and fought together against the british forces the english defeated them one by one in november 1817 bapu gogale he was the commander in chief of the army of peshwa he was defeated in the battle of eravada thus peshwa bajirao second whose armed forces commander bapu gogale was defeated by the british at the battle of eravada it forced the peshwa bajirao second to retreat purandar the british forces ended pune the capital of the peshwa and they removed the flag of the marathas and it was replaced by the british flag union jack thus the maratha independence came to an end in the third round of struggle now bonsile following the defeat of peshwa bonsile at nagpur also rose up in arms against the british he was also defeated like in the case of the second round of struggle between the marathas and the british the british was able to defeat them one by one bonsile was defeated on 27 november 1817 golkar was defeated on 21st december 1817 and golkar was another maratha chief golkar was also defeated golkar was forced to enter into another treaty with the british this treaty came into known as the treaty of mandesur this treaty was signed between the british and the golkar raja bapu gogale he was the commander in chief of the peshwa's forces he was killed at ashta finally bajirao second the peshwa surrendered before the british forces led by malcolm at mahu near indore on 3rd june 1818 from pune bajirao second the peshwa escaped to purandar but he was finally defeated at mahu the soldiers of the 
Peshwa Bajirao II were disbanded. His commander in chief had already been killed by the British forces. Peshwa ship was abolished. Peshwa ship was abolished by the British and the Peshwa Bajirao II was pensioned off. The British agreed to give them an annual pension of 8 lakh rupees to Bajirao II and he was allowed to live at Bidur near Kanpur. The Maratha Confederacy was also dissolved by the British. As you have been told, Peshwa Shippu was abolished and the Peshwa Bajirao II was pensioned off by the British. The territories of the Peshwa were taken over by the British. The territories now became the part of the English East India Company. The Peshwa became a British retainer. Dominions of Bonsile, he was also defeated by the British, became the part of the English East India Company, that is north of Narmada, was annexed to the British Empire. However, he was allowed to keep the rest as a subsidiary prince. With the Golkar also, the British signed the treaty. Pradap Singh, he was a lineal descendant of Shivaji, was made the rule of a small principality of Satara. Satara was formed out of the surrender territory of the Bajirao. Now, Lord Hastings turned his attention towards Rajput. It was during this time, Metcalf was the resident at Delhi. Lord Hastings asked Metcalf to negotiate with the Dejabut rulers and to bring their territories to the English East India Company. Metcalf concluded separate treaties with the Rajput rulers of Udaipur, Jaipur and Jodhpur. Jodhpur was agreed to provide 1500 horsemen to the service of the company in 1818 under the treaty signed between the Raja of Jodhpur and the Pradesh. In addition to provide 1,500 troops, horsemen to the service of the company, Jodhpur Raja was also required to pay an annual tribute to the tune of 1 lakh 8,000 rupees per annum. Another treaty was signed with Udaipur. In 1818, by the resident at Delhi, Metcalf, who negotiated this treaty with his Rajabut rulers on behalf of the Governor General Lord Hastings. Even though under the treaty signed between the Raja of Udaipur, the Rana was not required to render any horseman for the service of the English East India Company. But the Rana of Udaipur was required to provide a tri an tribute, an annual tribute. It was to be one fourth of the revenue for five years and thereafter three eighths of the revenue. These were the requirements imposed on the Rana of Udaipur by the resident at Delhi, Metcalf, at the instance of Lord Hastings. The signing of the treaty with the Rana of Udaipur 
further strengthen the morality of the english east india company how did it increase the morality of the english east india company because udaipur had never surrendered their independence to any force even to the mughals they had not surrendered but now this time udaipur surrendered their independence to the british the raja of jaipur was the last with whom matkap the resident of delhi enter in the treaty in 1818 he also agreed the similar provisions which had been agreed by the rulers of udaipur and jodhpur now we are going to see the administrative reforms introduced during the period of lord hastings in different parts of india it was during the period of lord hastings as the governor general right wide system of settlement was introduced in madras the system was introduced in 1820 right wide system of settlement was introduced in 1820 in madras during this time it was colonel mandro who served as the governor of madras you recall that under the permanent land revenue system of settlement which was established during the period of lord cornwallis in bengal bihar and orissa the settlement passed through an intermediary zamindar who collected land revenue directly from the peasants and paid it to the british but under the right wide system of settlement there were no intermediaries between the peasants and the british in right wide areas the revenue collected appointed by the british directly collected land tax from the peasants this system was introduced in madras presidency by colonel mandro during the period of lord hastings as the governor general there were certain characteristics with regard to the right wide system of settlement introduced in madras presidency one only after the measurement of the land measurement of land and checking the quality of the soil land tax was fixed and after the fixation of the land tax by the revenue collected after the measurement of the land and checking the quality of the soil the peasants would be given the choice of cultivating this particular land or not this was the theoretical background of the right wide system of settlement introduced by colonel mandro in madras but in practice after 1820 in many areas of madras right wide system of settlement was introduced by the british in areas where no survey no survey had ever been carried out the land tax began to be fixed based on the tax paid by the holder in the previous years so the assessment was heavy and it was difficult for the peasants to pay this high amount of land tax 
again in theory the peasants were given the option or the choice to cultivate or not to cultivate the land if the taxes were high the peasants were unlikely to cultivate this particular land so the peasants were required to force to cultivate these lands so the cultivation was not voluntary but it was compulsory it was difficult for the revenue collectors appointed by the british to collect land tax from these peasants several oppressive measures were adopted by the revenue collectors to get money from these peasants the madras torture commission appointed by the madras government in 1854 madras torture commission this commission highlighted these oppressive methods adopted by the revenue collectors for the collection of land revenue from these peasants only after the submission of the report by this madras torture commission the condition of the peasants became normal now it was during the period of lord hastings the land revenue settlement of right why was introduced in bombay now you recall that after the failure of the marathas in the third round of struggle the maratha territory is brought under the control of the english east india company in 1818 it became the the territories of the marathas became the part of the english east india company elphiston was the resident during this course of the third anglo maratha war elphiston he was a resident of the pune during the course of the third round of struggle between the marathas and the english it was this elphiston he introduced this right wary system of settlement in bombay it was introduced and as you recall that the collection of revenue was to be made after checking the quality of the soil as well as the measurement of the land it was done by an officer called pringle pringle was sent by the british to measure the lands possessed by the each person as well as to check the quality of the soil based on which land tax was to be fixed and when the revenue collectors went to collect land tax from the peasants according to the calculations made by pringle the peasants in maratha dominions escaped to the territories of the nizam of hyderabad because the calculations made by pringle was an oppressive assessment his assessment was based on the theory of rent theory of rent developed by david ricardo
Pringle made his calculation of the tax after measuring the quality of the soil and the land based on the theory of rent developed by David Ricardo. But this theory hardly applicable on Indian conditions. That is why when the revenue collectors went to collect the land revenue from the persons, they escaped to the dominions possessed by the Naisam of Hyderabad. And only in 1836, Goldsmith and Vinkage, the two other officers sent by the English for the settlement of revenue in this Western India, they did not develop any theory nor did adopt the calculation of the revenue on any theoretical background, but they sizably reduced the amount of tax to be paid by the peasants. With this, the condition of the peasants began to improve and the British was able to collect the land tax from the peasants in these areas of Western India. And with the de defeat of these Marathas in the third round of struggle, Western India became the part of the Bombay Presidency. The Marathas territories became the part of the Bombay Presidency and the British began to collect taxes from these areas directly. And another land revenue settlement introduced during the period of Lord Hastings was Mahalwari system of settlement. Mahal, which literally means village. It was a village settlement. The settlement of land tax was introduced in northwestern provinces. In northwestern provinces means the territories which had earlier been under the control of the Nabab of Out. These territories which brought under the control of the British in 1801. In 1801, it was during the period of Lord Wellesley, half of the dominions of the Nawab of Auth came under the control of the British. And later, from the Maratha, central provinces also became the part of the British administration. In these areas, the Magalwari system of settlement was introduced by the British. It was Holt Mackenzie. He introduced it in northwestern provinces, central provinces during the period of Lord Hastings. Under this settlement, the village was made collectively for the payment of land tax. The village headman divided the lands among the villages. They engaged in cultivation. The village headman collected taxes from these peasants and paid it to the British. And this system of settlement made with the, these villages came into known as Makalwari system of settlement. It was introduced in northwestern provinces, central provinces during the period of Lord Hastings. Then his another reform was that abolition of censorship. He abolished the unnecessary restrictions which had been imposed on press. 
with the abolition of the restrictions on the newspapers and the press a number of newspapers started publication in india these newspapers later played a key role in developing the nationalist feelings among the indians india's first vernacular newspaper samajar darpan which started its publication in 1818 these were the administrative reforms made by hastings during his period as the governor general from 1813 to 1823 in summing up lord hastings completed the works of lord wellesley thank you students for watching this class thank you